Alright guys, uh, welcome to Crimbo's edition of uh, Friends Discussing Football. Uh, it's going to be a podcast. Uh, as you can tell, <laughs> I'm not actually Krem. It's uh, actually Connor, Krem's pal. Uh, Krem's came and asked me uh, if I could help him uh, present the podcast whenever I can. So, that's the reason why I'm here. Um, Krem, you've, you've wanted to do this for a while. Are you glad uh-huh. to finally be doing it? Aye, very. Um, it's good to be doing it. I've been wanting to do this, so aye, should be exciting. Aye, it should be. Uh, funnily enough, we're not alone. Uh, we've brought with us two friends, two guests. Uh, one being Ryan. How are you doing, Ryan? I'm right, boys. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, and also Lawson. Lawson, you right, guys, how you doing? Right. Um, so aye, we'll, we'll firstly establish uh, we are all Celtic fans. Uh, before we get the the biased uh, <laughs> comments, um, so I Celtic fans right now. Recent time to be a Celtic fan, eh? It's brilliant to be a Celtic yeah, fan of Alan Brendan. Yeah. Came and changed the way the team under Ronnie nice. Dyla. Well, I'm not as good as we could be, so aye. Aye, uh, I think. Th- I mean, at the end of last season, Ronnie Dyla. Um, Feel consistently failed uh, to deliver any success in Europe. Uh, won two titles. Uh, we did get to the round of uh, two in the uh, I know, but Europa League, League gets me where we are wanting to be right now because uh, hmm. well, Champions League provides like us like with the financials that we actually need. Well, personally, to I'd like Celtic to be in the Europa League more than the Champions League. Well, start to start in the Champions League, then finish third. Aye, because obviously if they had to get the into the last Champions 16, League, that's what I was thinking. Because there isn't a high chances. When you go off, I'm sorry, mate. There isn't a high chances proceeding even more in the tournament. But mm-hmm. in the Europa but League, we've got a much more chance of going further. Aye, aye I yeah, think it's, it's important to get to the Europa League uh, via the Champions League group stage because obviously, you know, qualifying for the Champions League through the, the playoff well, round is what, £15 on the million? Pound. Okay as well because look at our group this year if we finished third it would have been brilliant this year obviously mm-hmm. the results mattered when we lost to Munching Gladbach at home just well, just uh, unlucky with the group we got some people some people even called it the group of death uh, I'm just unlucky uh, with the draw I if you actually look on you go Connor. across uh, sorry Graham, if you actually look across at some of the other groups I mean I mean Leicester you know they did get to the quarterfinals but uh, I mean, their group was kind of, you know, surely if Celtic were in there, <laughs> uh, surely if Celtic were in there. <laughs> <laughs> you're right, mate. It's just, you're always just uh, well sorry. on the podcast. The but, uh, well yes, going. listen, fuck it, say what you want. <laughs> um, no, that, <laughs> surely if Celtic were in that group, you'd, you'd have backed them, eh? Aye. Aye, you'd expect to be Aye. But, well, Europa League would be fine if, if we were in that group, and then if we had a bet mentioned God back at home, and then got the draw away, I thought we'd have had a great Champions League run for us. But well, especially with the that. draw with Man City, and um, obviously the draw at home and away to Man City. Mm-hmm. Well, see no, if you look at it, see if Cal McGregor finishes that chance Aye. in Germany, Celtic. Mm-hmm. Oh, when it get Europa League. It's, it's aye, worth, it's worth noting that. Aye, yeah, it's I worth think Callum McGregor uh, has improved though, like since mate, the Champions League. And the Royal obviously, Royal. Obviously, obviously the goal scoring run he's on just now, as well. Aye. Uh, we'll, 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 get sure that. Oh. <laughs> we'll get onto that. We'll get onto that a little bit later, but you know, firstly we're going to start uh, for the beginning, what's been probably the best campaign uh, many years of saw in a lifetime of Celtic, so the start of the season, Lincoln Red Imps, oh. first round of the playoff, the uh, uh, qualifiers, sorry, for the Champions League, we go to Gibraltar, and we go this 1-0, what was your thoughts at that point? Well, I just think it was going to be same old. I know, I thought it was thing. going to be the same as like under Ronnie Dyer, here we go again, but oh, obviously, I thought, I, I was going to let Rodgers away with it because obviously it was his, what, fourth game in charge of Celtic. 
Uh, we're still trying to work out his team. We're still getting used to the team. Uh, Different style of play as well. But then if you look at uh, Bersheva, if you look at them at home, mm -hmm. uh, try to get you all there. So, Obviously, we called it back against uh, the Redimps to get ah, to the second phase. Uh, Astana. 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 Uh, was that was that the game that we got two penalties? Nah, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't Aye. say it was Aye. comfortable Aye. considering we got through with two Aye. penalties. And a hold of much preferred if penalties are given, you have got stolen. <laughs> no, you uh, especially the the berries. <laughs> <laughs> With Dembele's penalty, if that was a 90th minute, if he if we didn't get that and didn't score it, we wouldn't have had Champions League football this year. Let's Even just clarify something there, that little joke Chelsea. there. Uh, Send Ryan, Diego, let's just say he's notorious for winning penalties when he plays Aye. football. So, you know, he's one that likes to win as a penalty. But, Aye. yeah, moving on. So, we saw, we saw Astana off, um, we've done the job. Then next, the playoff round, the all important one, Hapoel Belshiva. Home leg. Up on uh, 5 2. 5 2. 3 0 up at half time. What was running through your heads at 3 2 with oh, 20 was, minutes I to go? It, I thought it was going to happen. Especially with the away goals and stuff. I know. Well, considering we are 3 0 up and then 5 minutes later they got their two away goals. Aye, I know, mm. it's like, it's I like was pretty was nervous. Was the loss in the goals, like the two, what the quickness of the goals, were they know like two minutes, five uh, minutes, back to back. each other. Aye, uh, back to back. Was that, was that spell? Um, First one, Gordon could have done uh, better, but the second one, they didn't have a chance, it was a great finish. Aye, I think, uh, I think Belshiva was more just, I mean, these qualifying rounds are, it's more just about getting through in it. Aye. Uh, I mean, performance is like anything is a bonus, I think. Especially so, 15 million the, pounds oh, was generated. Uh, we went to Belshiva. Uh, we also what happened there, we lost 2 nothing, but the result was pretty irrelevant. God saved the penalty, yes. Yeah. Um, it was often, I mean, I know it's going to stray in a wee bit uh, off topic here, but Craig Gordon was actually going through a bit of a a sad uh, stage, a rough patch, yes. Uh, as a goalkeeper, Doris De Vries obviously came in. Aye. I mean, he's he's really turned it around this season, hasn't he? Aye, he's been brilliant since Doris De Vries took the place awesome. for the two games. But Well, considering this season, Celtic have only conceded 26 goals and had 26, no, 25 clean sheets. It's an over here. Uh. <laughs> Eh, uh, no, you're Very right. Well. The whole back line, I think, just got so much better under Rogers. Um, uh, but yes, so we qualified. Fifteen million pounds in the bank. Uh, we went to to see the group, the group of death, as Graham touched on uh, earlier. Uh, Manchester City, league. Barcelona, and Borussia Mönchengladbach. Uh, we finished third. I thought. No, I finished fourth, sorry. <laughs> On three points, three draws. Um, how did you think the campaign went? To be honest, uh, from my perspective, I thought oh. that we gave a decent account of ourselves. Uh, uh, especially, especially the, the Man three City home games. Uh, Man City game. Well, well apart, apart from the Manchester Gladbach game, they came to Parkhead and knew what they had to do uh, and got the job uh, done. I thought, I thought, to be honest, I went to, to all the games. Uh, obviously, I missed the Barcelona away game and the, the Michigan Gladbach away game, but I went to the rest and I thought, from what I saw anyway in the crowd, that Munchen Gladbach were the best team that we, oh that we faced all season. That was the way they played the ball, strong at the back, broken uh, numbers, and they were just, I thought they were an absolute class act when they mm -hmm. came to Parkhead. It was a learning game for us, I thought. Well, we'll, we'll only probably team learned a lot. Off. We are, we are the only nice team game. that Manchester City didn't beat in the Champions League uh, in their campaign. Nah, I don't, I don't, I don't know, but um, are we the, the only team maybe um, all over, or did Chelsea beat them home and away? 
Um, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure about that one. Anyway, I'm not really. That's one for another day. Uh, so I, three points. Um, Same as like. In the of Champions course, League, three points no one expected us to get. This is going off topic, but like in the Champions League, no other way the new writings are getting into the Champions League. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Aye. What do you think about that? Because finding it. Well, there's, there's rumours that Celtic need to play another another playoff round. Is that correct as well? Um, well, what I'm for what I'm hearing is like it goes on like. The, the the actual team instead of the country now, so would that mean Aye. that S Celtic winning and getting in every year would eventually bring us to be getting an A Champions League automatically with the? Um, I wouldn't say we get in every year. Ah, you know, but <laughs> like I'm saying, like for we get in when we start getting in every year, does that mean like as if we are? Getting right in every ball. year, does that but mean we are going to get match. automatic into the Champions 10, League soon? Or Hazard. is that going to mean like. I think, I mean, I know that currently Scotland is one of the countries the that has indicated you can't. There will be obviously, by winning the English minutes, Premier League, you're automatically in the Champions League. Uh, by winning La Liga, Bundesliga, so on and so forth. Um, but in Scotland, certainly, uh, winning your domestic title is not enough to get you into the Champions League. So. As far as I'm aware, this season uh, and next season, I don't know unless it's it's changed. Uh, I actually read changed. something about if Manchester United won the Europa League, Celtic uh, pot three would go into because it's in our English team added. Aye. Mm -hmm. Wasn't. Do you think? Do you think being in pot three? Do you think being in pot three would? Drastically change the success we get in Europe. Well, yes, yeah, because it's a massive well, boost. Obviously, because um, obviously the pot three and like getting better teams, but could still yeah, end up a great team for pot one. Game. Like we could end up with a Real Madrid for pot one, and then. Why don't you talk at once for fuck's sake? I mean, you're right. Just saying it. Give you a better chance of getting European football after Christmas, because. If you draw a team that supposedly was younger than you, and no. that you're better on. I mean, so certainly at home. It's certainly Aye. at home, I think. Well, with the atmosphere and everything that. We've always been knows. whacking away in Europe and away games. Mm hmm. Aye. Me like, as a Celtic fan, I don't fear anyone at Parkhead. I know. I think at Parkhead, we're certainly with the crowd, the 12th man, and okay. all that. Aye. So that is. What was it, 2012, when we beat Barcelona 2-1? Oh, Not aye. too sure if I was a fluke, but... I know, um, but... Well, but listen, see, to beat the best team in the world, world, you need your luck, don't you? Well, if yes. results at home, it's quite to see that Barcelona doesn't usually dominate Celtic at mm -hmm. Parkhead. I thought the 2-0 uh, game was actually a relatively close affair. I mean, Barcelona, uh, uh, hats off, outplayed us, but, you know, you couldn't expect that, but... I mean, what it, about if Fizigiri, hold on, sorry, sorry, uh, if Fizigiri doesn't, <laughs> Fizigiri doesn't you know, stupidly, unnecessarily pull down Suarez uh, to give Barcelona the two-nil lead, I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I think we could have still had a, a chance to to get something out of the game. I mean, ten minutes to go with Barca, if they only had the one nothing lead, I think that would have drastically changed the game. But I think it put us put the game beyond us when, obviously. Messi stepped up and scored. I'm not saying that it wasn't a penalty, but it was genuinely smart play uh, from Suarez. Oh, I know exactly what he was doing. Mm -hmm. I think that's just his quality. I mean, he's aware that it's silly from his Aguirre. Uh, I know. But well, I think he can train it. We got it from Kizal Tierney. Tierney bringing me in training. Um, so the Champions League ended. Um, Away in Manchester. Wait, Second wait, time can we touch on the uh, situation of Lustig and Neymar? What do you guys think of that? that bit of... Personally, I think I Neymar, just don't like Neymar. I, think I dislike all. Neymar, right? I dislike him. I think but he's a bit arrogant. Uh, he's got every right though. Uh, you know. He's got a class. I, well. I hate, I, don't, I dislike the person. I do, right? But for a footballing sense, one, he's class to watch. And two, I mean, 
a lot of people hate him from Brown kicking him, but let's oh. face it, I mean, Brown did know that that was just stupid as fuck and unnecessary for him to kick him. And I mean, if you are, if your team, uh, Celtic are away from home, hey! up against it, because I mean, that night, I mean, I think Barcelona oh. were actually winning at that time, but it was still, Celtic were still right in the game. So if we were away in, for, let's just say for instance, Man City, uh, and you know, somebody company kicked, fuck knows, Tom Rogic in the back, and Tom Rogic done nothing about it. What if he did, you know, react to it, uh, uh. company would have get sent off. You'd expect your player to do it, because I mean, he has benefit in your team. I don't uh. agree with diving or anything, but it's proven that Brown did kick him in the back. Stupid as a captain. Um, Got so to show the leadership and the captain. Exactly. He's not, he, he can't rise to anything like that. But the Champions League dream ended in Manchester. Again. A 1-1 one, one draw attended. Let's just, just say that. Uh, great experience. <laughs> uh, Patrick Roberts, who again we touch on a little bit later on the podcast. Uh. Got the goal. Uh, I thought it ended quite well. Uh, uh, we're in high but spirits. Like well. Played really well, took two points off, you know, team that has team arguably the best manager in the world, spends on average the most amount of money. Uh, and has won two Premier re- Leagues. Won two trophies. Premier League titles in the last couple of years. Um, Champions League semi-finals. Uh, so I, I thought Champions League is kind of just what you expect. Um, we have no expectations really in Europe, we competed. Uh, no. And yeah, it was a good journey. So, As in on. Europa League, what, what would you think about Europa League? How far do you think we could get in Europa? So it's an argument see. I hear a lot. But I think last eight, eight, last eight, four. Last eight, last four. Mm-hmm. Inter, I, I, I think we could go mm-hmm. far. And if Odegaard and Odegaard and Odegaard and Odegaard and Odegaard the looks on our side, yeah. we could possibly get to the final, but... I believe that the Ajax team, Shelly, could go out and beat them. Uh, nah. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe not, maybe not the Manchester United team, but definitely no. the Ajax team. Uh, uh, the Ajax team are I mean, a bit it's just your young luck. and inexperienced. inexperienced. Uh, I mean, I definitely think we could, you know, do reasonably well in Europa League, but it all depends on the draw. Because I mean, if you get, you could potentially have a group with uh, Sevilla, um, all the teams in that. Teams in that similar to them, aye. Uh, um, but the Champions League dream ended in Manchester. Domestically then. Domestically, uh, been a bit of a canter for Celtic this season. Obviously. Uh, Hundred points. Okay, quick question for by you. Christmas. Right, hopefully we can get there. Be the invincibles for a season. On your yes, goal, awesome. awesome. Shoot. Do you just think we could beat Martin O'Neill's 104? Record this season, considering we've, we've only got Partick first all away and Hearts at home for a title party, obviously. Yes. Yes, definitely. I think, I think Partick first all away from home. Partick first all a decent side. Uh, um, I, you know, they obviously they take leads in games. Uh, as Rangers showed last week, I don't really think uh, Partick first will have the ball on their team to hold um. on the leads. So, I mean, I think that'll be comfortable. And then the title party, knowing that it's. The, the last game for an undefeated season, title we, party, 60,000 there, I think we'd definitely yeah, sweep hearts aside, so have yes, in my opinion we would. on title day, like when we got the title, have we ever lost? Just... I don't know, Chris. Just lost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pretty much a long one. It's a bit of a... Google out. <laughs> Many of them. Have a bit of a bummer, losing on title day. <laughs> um, well, hopefully we don't. I know. Here's hope. Uh, um, the Invincibles, yes. so you think that's possible then? The Invincibles? Aye. For less yeah, anyway. yeah, aye. Especially beating Aberdeen aye. last night, of course. Our friends across the border. Our <laughs> friends across <laughs> friends across the city. Rangers FC. The fourth official is indicated. Three minutes. It's not been their best season. Mm, I think we're well aware of the, uh, no. the cup semi last year. They, they beat us. It's sort of going for 55. Uh, they came up. 
Um, put our display out, which is. Let's just say, I think Celtic this season have firmly put Rangers in their place. Con. Five games played, I think four wins. Years ahead of them. Still. I think we're superior, definitely. Um, I believe that. Let's break. I think we will be superior <laughs> for a good two years, maybe still, until they sort out their firm financial two years? state. Aye. I'd be, I'd be, I think it'd be a bit more. Five or six, seven uh, years. That's just what I think, but just in case they like sort out their financial state they're in just now. Mm -hmm. they, need, they require immediate mass investment. Uh, uh, and that team, Pedro I mean, Cucina came in. Relying on uh, loans to buy players is not too good. Relying <laughs> on a 38 year old is your best. Yeah, no, <laughs> Uh, we're not obviously expertise in Rangers financial crisis, so we'll <laughs> focus on the park. Uh, in terms of the team, this season Celtic, we've played them 2 5 ones, uh, a 2-0 victory, uh, a 1-0 victory. Um, we'll break no. each game individual down, no so 10th each. of September. 10th of September. They came to Celtic Park, it was the first league meeting since, well, I believe, 2012. Yes. Um, five one. Uh, was what was your thoughts on great that game then? Um, aye. We sh we definitely put the concrete down, showing that we were clearly better. And <laughs> even on the park, everywhere. So. Aye. Yes. I think it's just what Scott Brown said, men against boys, Joey Barton, Barton, the big man before it and Scott Brown just sat him down. He's now got a button for betting. There's not a bet on it, eh? So yeah, that was the first one. Firmly deserved victories. Um, the next one, I believe, was a... Uh, 2-1 victory at Ibrox. Yes. Uh, well, oh, sorry. Oh, I've one missed one out here. 1-0 win at Hamden. Last yes. Although, uh, although it was only 1-0, I mean, they, they we never, they never really played them all over. Mm -hmm. I remember one chance, uh, Jozo Simunovic made an absolutely outstanding Good block. Up. I think it might have been uh, through Windass. Uh, it it was. was an absolute stinger that he took right in the right in the chest, um, but apart from that, I thought that was quite comfortable as well. Uh. Um, then we went, obviously went to Ibrooks. Rangers took the lead. I thought for the first 30 minutes at that game, I thought they were they, were, they played well, minute. they rushed us, the crowd obviously, I, I think a few Celtic players were kind of taken aback. Because Ibrooks, I've been, it's a hostile atmosphere, uh, just at Celtic Park. Which a lot of the boys first time in Ibrooks. Yeah. Uh. But of class, so that was yeah, again. Tierney's first couple of games back after breaking his ankle, was it no? Uh, Kieran Tierney didn't uh, actually feature, he was in the crowd for oh, that game. That, um, that was fine, sorry. No, no worries. <laughs> We're all entitled to an, an error. Um, <laughs> no, 2 1, Sinclair uh, scoring late on after Dembele leaving before half time. I thought that was a kind of closer affair. I thought Rangers done alright that day, maybe took a bit of confidence uh, uh, and whatnot. Uh, and then we had. The gap was supposedly closing. <laughs> yes. Uh, and then obviously we had uh, the meeting at Celtic Park on, in March. Let's just establish I thought Celtic had a, an off day. I thought we were uh, very, very, very day. poor. Game, just uh, thinking, yeah, I'm thinking it was yeah. a canter, but they played it as again, uh, same as watching the back, Martin. they turned up the uh, what to do, and mm -hmm. what Game they Martin would say is a well. great result. Game uh, Martin deserves a lot of praise for I mean, the draw, but they came in and I, I, set up a team I that personally thought office. that it was a bit overdone, like the way they took it as a draw. I thought. The way they were ah, celebrating looked. I mean, their, their fans have ultimately had nothing. I mean, a lot of Rangers ah, fans to cheer would about. agree with me this season. They've had nothing really to shout about. Ah. I mean, it's been a pure lackluster season for them, and I think a draw at Parkhead. It's the closest they've got to us all season. Ah. 
I, I believe it could go up and do a lot of places. Really, he made two big saves with Lycon. Uh, oh, he did. Lycon like like had an off day as well. Has a goalkeeper. Oh, Lycon's like having a few of them recently. Um, so yes, one one. Um, Lycon did the feature of the day and just felt his hearts, did he? Obviously, they get that last minute. Did they? Well, not last minute, but <laughs> eight something in the equaliser. Um, I didn't watch yes. it all though, so. It Obviously. felt more like a defeat. Uh, I'd agree with that. Um, then what I did, so, I draw. Now the controversy in that game, last minute, Clint Hill on Lee Griffiths. Now I'm actually going to come round you individually here. Ryan McGeekin, was that a penalty? Oh, of course, I just don't want to get along. He's a striker, mm -hmm. if, if that happens to you, you're down here. Screaming for a penalty. I, just, I, don't, I don't know what the ref is looking at, I don't know what he's, what he's saw. Mm -hmm. Right, Lawson? Yeah, I totally agree with Ryan. Stonewall. Penalty for me. Kieran? Krem? Penalty for me, definitely. Um, right, now, I'm going to throw a bit of a curveball on this year, right now. I, I'm a centre half or sweeper <laughs> uh, when I play football myself, right? And if I, I mean, I think... Not to mention what team you actually play for, but... Okay, we'll talk about that. Ah, we'll talk about that. All three of you's what team you play for, actually. We knew that was going to get mentioned at some point. Uh, no, we'll yeah. cover that. It was coming. It was we'll coming. cover that in the next episode. <laughs> uh, but no, I'll get back to my point. I think, as a defender, I mean, I think Clint Hill definitely, I mean, ob obstructs Lee Griffiths. There's definitely contact. He gets a bit on the ball, uh, but well. I think I think there's stage for Griffiths to actually pull the trigger there before Lee, uh, Clint Hill actually makes contact. And Clint Hill, I think that is dead. I would give a penalty, but it's not as clear cut as a lot of uh. fans made it out to be. And I, I'm I sit it in the, the safe standing at an opposite corner of the ground, so I literally didn't have a great view of it. But I mean. After seeing the video replay and that, I don't know. I think a lot of Celtic fans. Oh, you, you can't take it away for Rangers. They, they, they thoroughly ah, deserved the draw, if not the win, actually. Mm hmm, they did. But. I'd agree. Um, so, yeah, that was that one. Next one we had, I believe, uh, Hamden. Yes. Yep. Again, 2 0 victory for Celtic. Uh, I thought. Personally, in my opinion, I thought Hamden was uh, very comfortable. The I thought it was the second most comfortable performance we've had against them uh, uh, all season. The, 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 the most comfortable the, performance. Uh, I think I'll get on that a bit. Yeah, I've seen Callum McGregor's name in a. Yes, well, I think we all did. It's <laughs> <laughs> proof, man. But that, that finish, what about that? The composure. Cam oh, and nature to simply it. pass that it is, in the net. That is. Usually he shows how much he's came, like the, the Munchen Gladback miss, to cleanly slotting away a great that finish sure against the Rangers. Orders, I, think. Mm -hmm. I definitely think, I mean, we can see it, there's hundreds of examples, I mean, Armstrong, uh, uh, Brown, Boyata. Forrest, Brown, Boyata, Gordon. Gordon, all these players that uh, Rogers has. Definitely, I mean, even Sinclair. I mean, Sinclair uh, was playing left back buy. for Aston Villa in a rele relegation scrap last season, but all these players have definitely took to Rodgers, and I mean, he's no different. Uh, I think we've got a real a, a, a team. I mean, every single player we've got has got something to offer. Uh, mm -hmm. James Forrest, even, well. even players on the bench have like a lot to offer for us. Like. Yeah, a few game changers. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I think the Another key thing about what Rogers has done is, if he notices, um, unlike Ronnie Dyla, previous manager, uh, I like I like Ronnie Dyla, and I mean, fair enough to him, uh, he delivered two titles. He tried his best. But um, I think what Brendan Rogers does as well is, if he identifies an issue, like he's he's, he's not hesitant to change it. Uh, uh, and if you're not working hard and you're not doing your job, you know you're not. Like you're not going to be there. at the start of the season. Mm -hmm. But obviously he's not. Um, Brought back into the side. He's also got a plan B. He can, he can yeah. mix things up. Uh, mm -hmm. 
as we've seen so, in yeah. by bringing in the young players against um who was it we played? St Johnston. St Johnston. And Ralston and Johnston. Ralston. Yeah. St Johnston. Uh, so yeah, that was one 0 Rangers yeah. literally uh, I remember one Kenny Miller header. I think that was uh, it. So the way we moved the ball and then um Wagon did have a chance late on in the match, but the ball. Uh, sure. two 0 down, I'm pretty sure it was game over. But to make it two 0 Scott Sinclair, as he often has this season, scores a penalty. Uh, good break from a Rangers corner, I believe. Talking about penalties. Was that a penalty as well? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think oh. that was a stonewaller. I thought it was a sending off as well, <laughs> considering it was the last man, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. sure. Aye, I think there's, there's not been a change in the laws though. Uh, if you're going to give a penalty, you can't give a red card as well. I yes, think aye, that's 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 if you're the last man and you're not down and it's a penalty, mm -hmm. you can't send the player off. I think that's that, uh, so that that why. Law, no law, but rule was passed mm -hmm. after the Euros. Right. So that was Pedro Aye. Cusinha's first old firm derby. Aye. Many Rangers fans complained and didn't like the way he set up. We then well, got to. Uh, you've got to a give week. the guy a chance. A lot of people. Oh. Hold on, Krim. Right. What are you saying? <laughs> Just to bring Aye. up the Andy Harvey challenge. Because he gets into the game and he's part of the I love a good cruncher. Uh, but that. But I me, I did not. I was just sending off. I thought the referee got it spot on. I, I think it was a booking yeah. as well. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> I think he sent off. Tackle. That was like the nah, most perfect tackle. There's no... You can't the make a no comparison way. with that, personally. I don't think the minute of the game should matter. But, uh, that's, if he hits him, if Roberts doesn't see that coming, he doesn't, he doesn't read the challenge, he mm -hmm. broke his leg. Uh, <laughs> that's not funny. Um, so yeah, right, Pedro Cusinha, that was his first taste of an old firm derby. Uh, people are saying uh, he should have just did what Graham Murphy did, but you've got to give him a chance to experiment with his own team. I mean, he is going to probably be there for a while. I do recall yeah, him saying that he had the best squad in Scotland. Uh, I know, uh, but um, I, think he's I, think, one. I think he's bound to, to try and say things <laughs> to get a lot of Rangers fans on say. Uh, but no, he was heavily criticised for his tactics. One week later, they met, two sides met again at Ibrooks for the final Old Firm derby of the season. And let's say it was the most convincing Celtic performance I've seen all season. I thought we were absolutely immense from start uh, to finish. And beat them 5-1 in their own backyard. Obviously the early oh, just is get his going. Brilliant. It was just great atmosphere. My first time attending Ibrook Stadium. Same uh, with me. Thoroughly enjoyed Bro it. Brilliant. It's a great result. I uh, don't think I'd have, I would have enjoyed being in the stadium if the result had gone differently. But let's not worry about that. Uh, five one. Outstanding. Early another goal. Record. Best goal. Another was record. Probably yes. Pre best goal for me was probably Lee Griffiths. Oh. See, I think for, I think um, any other day was Fodrum saves that. Uh, he's he's one of the few he, players in the Rangers team. That I think he positions himself he set for the ball to go low, low, but obviously Lee Griffiths had it set out. Well, um, I'm in charge. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, I think Wes Fodrum should save that. Yeah. Uh, so Sinclair scores his penalty. Miles Beerman, inexperienced. Rushes in on Roberts, uh, penalty given, Sinclair steps up, slots, slots it away. away. Yep. <laughs> Lee Griffiths <laughs> scores another. Uh, yeah. Then we had uh, Callum McGregor making it three, good finish. Uh, David Boyata added a fourth. And then Mika Wustig, <laughs> uh, right, right back, decided. Amazing. Right, he's in a striker. Yes, he did. I thought that was that was a good goal, um, and then Miller, uh, obviously at four one, added a, a near consolation. That's um, a bit of um, a guy to score um, in these matches. Yes, Kenny Miller. Um, but no, I thought that was probably. I mean, I've been to a, a lot of Celtic games this season, but that was probably my best ever experience, and that's up against you know Barcelona and the last Old Firm game. 
Uh, the four angels died. <laughs> Shut up. Don't know, don't know, don't know if I'm allowed to say that. Don't know if I'm allowed to say that. Uh, but, no, I think <laughs> that was just amazing. Watching you obviously were there as well. Was it the same for you? Yes, brilliant atmosphere. I really enjoyed it. From one end of the stadium. Just a pound well spent. So yeah, that concludes the old fun games for the <laughs> for the season. Uh, I th I don't think it could have gone any better, really. I think every time we played them, we reiterated that we were the best. I mean, a lot of Rangers fans already had accepted that the league was kind of over, and anything on top of that yes. would have been a consolation. Uh, but now to do to win the old fun games the way we did, I thought was was brilliant. That was. So then, uh, the League Cup final as well, we won amongst us, obviously we've uh, mentioned the semi-final, where we won 1-0. Aberdeen, 3-0 victory. Do you think, how, how important do you think the League Cup final actually was for the rest of well, the season? Well, well it's, it's a massive a part, because... Is that what I was going to say there, Graham? Aye, <laughs> for the treble. Aye. What, also, the treble, like... Do you think we'll beat Aberdeen in this final? Coming yeah. up? Yes, that's what's been. Yeah. Well, obviously, the league, we've got two, three games remaining now. Uh, Inverness. Not uh, Inverness. <laughs> Perfect for some sorry. Uh, <laughs> Midweek. Inverness, uh, we could bring them up for Thursday night. On Thursday night, yes. Then Hearts the following week, I believe, uh, for the title party. Uh, and then the Scottish Cup final against Aberdeen. So yes, the treble <sighs> is on the 27th of May, I believe. That will be conclude the season for Celtic, and what a season it's been. Yes. Just it's, cool. it's probably the best doing. season I've probably seen Celtic play it for me being alive. Uh, I mean, we are still young, uh, yes. but definitely. That could be improvements when we. Get older. <laughs> Another so, question, please. Do you think we'll get to the arrow? I sure do. Right. Ooh. That's. <laughs> we'll go round us all here. We'll go round <laughs> us all. It's a great question, Lawson, so I think we'll go individually. So, Krem, do you think we'll do 10 in a row? Yes, definitely. Unless Rangers sort out their financial difficulties, then yes, I do think we will do 10 in a row. Mm -hmm. Do you think that even if they sort out, you know, the financial issues, do you think that they can trust Pedro Cachinha to bring in, you know, the, the players that they need to challenge well, us? for what it looks like just now, if he's, like, getting the money that he can get to sign good players instead of relying on 37-year-olds to do the job for him, then <laughs> yes. Nice to get that wee dig in there. Uh, Ryan, do you think we'll do 10 in a row? <laughs> As long as Brendan Rodgers stays, we're only going to get better and better each year. Uh -huh. And just to touch on that with, with, with Pedro Cixina, if he does get the money, I just I don't think he's got, I just don't think he's got the brains. I, mean, I seen he was meant to be mm -hmm. he was linked with somebody from the Qatar League. And, uh, uh, so, uh -huh. <laughs> I just don't think anybody <laughs> in that league is good enough. Uh, I think and that's playing in Scotland, saying you're not good enough. I mean. <laughs> We'll not get the best quality league over here. Uh, but in my opinion, I think we will do 10 in a row. I think Brendan Rodgers will do 10 and then move on. Uh, interviews, he's, he's, he's wanting to hang around. He signed a four-year deal. And he wants to continue his managerial career after he leaves Celtic. So I think 10 gets to 10. Name yes. will go down in history. Who knows how many trebles he'll win. Um, and doubles and trophies. He'll become a club legend. Uh, and then I think he'll move on. Lawson, do you? Well, it's one of the ones I'm not too sure because obviously next season I think we'll win the league comfortably again. But then with the seasons after that, I think that's exactly when Rangers will start to challenge us again. Right. And no Rangers get caught in manager in. So they just. Which I could highly do. doubt them doing and bringing a great manager in, like, the way we brought Brendan Rodgers in. 
Like, this just touches on if Rogers. This is touching on a bit of Rogers staying for ten in a row. But I'll if, see if we lo lose the league. Like at eight, eight, nine. Mm -hmm. I don't uh, see him staying. I think if he, if we get to eight, for example, as you said, and we do eight, uh, and we lose it, it after that, I think. I think. Aye, maybe, I think he would well. stay and, and try and. I think Brendan Rodgers won't leave, he won't be content to leave until we are the force in Scotland, like we are just yeah. now. Um, I don't think he would bow out of Celtic. Uh, like, what is Europe for us now? Uh, yeah, yeah, I know. Aye. It's more mm. just relying on the money to come in from Europe, like. To get it, the players as well. I think the league plays a big part in the players that joins us. Oh. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, if, in terms of uh, what Crown said earlier about attracting players, I mean, Celtic literally do have everything to offer to Premier League players, and yeah, I'm people say we can't attract them. <coughs> say we can't attract them, but I mean. I'm pretty sure that I could name it at least seven or eight that would walk into teams in the Premier League and be able to play at a decent level every week. I mean, if you can say People to players, Stuart Armstrong, and uh, if you can say to players, listen, come here, you're going to be playing in front of uh, good, six, passionate fans. Nine. You're going to be playing, hopefully, uh, six Champions League group stages games, maybe more. You could get Europa League football. You're going to get. Well, a minimum of four old firm derbies to play in, and then, you know, who knows how many old firm games, you know, they might play them in the cup, or, yeah. um, in finals and semi-finals, so, I mean, the recognition you're going to get, I mean, we've already saw a lot of Premier League clubs sniffing about, Celtic, uh, Dembele, Craig Dembele. Gordon, you know, Craig uh. Gordon was linked with Chelsea, so, Tierney's been linked with just about everybody, uh. um, so, <laughs> We can definitely attract the big players. Uh, yeah, I don't really see like a goals. good Premier League player come to Scotland and just be good instead of people trying to buy like people like um what's his name? Joey Barton. Like mm -hmm. I know he played in the championship but like he uh, thought he was just trying to come up here uh, and for it to be a walk in the park. He said that and... we made him out to be messy, but he really made himself out to look, try to Can make himself look the big man. Aye. I mean, I understand I the point he's making. Uh, Going to throw something else at you, CLD. Can you, Scotland has an evidently bad reputation down in England anyway, Aye. right? Uh, the Diddy League playing against well, shite every Aye. week. The Mickey um, Mouse League. Uh, yep. Um, could you uh, almost understand in a way? Why people like Joey Barton, who I mean Championship Player of the Year, uh, let's not deny. I mean, I don't, I don't know any Rangers fan that would have been saying at the start of the season, "Oh fuck, we've seen Joey Barton." I mean, uh, and any other teams would be. I think a lot of teams would have loved to have Joey Barton in their team. I mean, can you almost understand why a lot of these players come down here thinking, "Fuck, this is going to be, be a, a, a walk in the park." Uh, when you look at the quality of opposition, it's, mm -hmm. it's just not too good, but you can only have each in front of you. Definitely. Um, so yeah, that's kind of domestically. Um, obviously, Rangers have been... Aberdeen, Aberdeen, sorry, have been, you know, the closest reminder, tickets challengers, I guess, they are, are second. Um, it's most likely now that they will finish second. Do you, I would even Aberdeen, call them challengers. <laughs> They're, uh, not, they're not, they're right. not. Let's be real here. Then. Let's be real. No one has challenged uh, us uh, this season. A class above. Would, would you prefer a challenge or do you prefer this us running over the league? I'm really enjoying this unbeaten run. Uh, mm -hmm. But for more excitement and more. Like the Mullerwell game. Joy than when we win the league. Like I'd the, like a challenge. The Mullerwell game. Uh, the Mullerwell game season. is. Like the chance we got thing. there, and like the way just, Celtic just played just to there. bring it back. Like Lawson, you were there. You know the experience. What was it like? Oh, it was brilliant. See, just especially the comeback, and I heard about you charging at I've, the Mullerwell support. 
No, te haces, sí, te haces chiste en la tierra de los mundos. A ver, el Brovin. Chiste en la tierra de los mundos. Obviamente, lo que han visto en el 12 minutos en. Te bring it back to full frame, keep on beating one, Brovin. So, if we lost the unbeaten run there, would these of. Do you think. To be honest, that though, that, that was. A... Dent in the league? Mm -hmm. Nah, but that was at a stage in the season where. Nobody was really talking about it. I think Aye. it was still relatively early on the campaign. It's only really been these last couple of months that people have actually thought, by the way, I mean, as the days go down, it's like we've only got X amount of games Aye. left. There's an actual realistic chance we can do it. Just, um, just to follow up on what you said there, Krem, about lighting a challenge, Aye. it's quite weird because I was actually at the Kilmarnock game, eh, St Johnson game, sorry, just, just there last week. I was actually sitting talking to the boy who sits next to me at the games and I said you know it's the weirdest thing I says we went to Ibrooks last week but yeah I'm still just as excited to go and watch Celtic play St Johnston a yes. week later and I think that just shows that the every game has been every well. game every game has been I mean amazing but uh, I mean I'm looking forward to going and watch watching Celtic, Celtic and St Johnston the football we played over on Dyla wasn't too exciting. It was like, right, we're winning, mm -hmm. but we're winning the league. But I still want to see more. Like, going to a game on a Wednesday night, you'd get like a good twenty thousand <laughs> at a game. I know. And the crowds have definitely improved. The seasons, this the season where like we got into the last sixteen Europa and. Uh, the stadium wasn't even full. The fourth official has indicated there will be a yeah, but doesn't even open it up. Uh, of added tier. Tier for uh. the group stages. Um, no. But, um, yeah, so, as we've touched on there, that was kind of the whole, the whole campaign summed up into, into one. Uh. Um, obviously, we've had the, the awards. I think Celtic have been very successful at these awards. Uh. Scott Sinclair picked up uh, a couple. Uh, Richard and Bailey grabbing Tierney. goal of the season, Kieran Tierney getting young player of the year. What goal um, was it he actually get goal of the season for? The one against St Johnson, but or is it Celtic oh, is that the one where they're like passing the ball through and that? Lustig again, there's a wee thing about Lustig this oh, year. Aye, he's got the Rabona. And then the goal, the Rabona assist. Well, it wasn't actually the assist, but... Yeah, but um, we'll take it. So, the PFA Awards. PFA, whatever it's called. <laughs> Obviously Celtic done really well at that. Was there anything maybe you think should have gone differently or were you pretty content with the result? Well, did, did Sh Armstrong win it? No, uh, Armstrong didn't. No. Personally, I thought he should have won at least. Well, you look at Sinclair. Sinclair what is what scored 26 goals this season. Ah, yeah, I mean, like, He's if there was that, like, most of the players that can play of the year, I know that sounds really stupid, but, right, like, come on. come on. You're cutting each no, other like, off, you one. Get on, get on. Get on, get on. Like, if there was, like, um, a most improved player of the year, like, say that was in there, that sounds stupid, that's probably, like, an only under 12s mm -hmm. boys trophy, but. <laughs> <laughs> if I was, it's in there, that's definitely got to go to him. Like, the transformation Aye. he's made from yeah, Ronnie Dyler yeah, over to... Um, Aye, I think he was. I think he was actually... Let's not talk about FIFA, Ryan. <laughs> no, the, the, the PFA Scotland team this season. Right, that's it, yeah. I thought we were talking <laughs> about FIFA now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've got to follow up on that. Do you think... <laughs> Do you think, obviously you said Stuart Armstrong has been kind of most improved, uh, would, would Callum McGregor not be up there as well, in terms well, of aye, but um, like impact? It's just, it's just the way similar. that Armstrong never used to get a game for under Ronnie Dyla, like he would come on as a sub, same with Mackay Stephen, but like when we both bought Point him and position then... As well. uh, like, for me, and then I wouldn't... this season, oh, like, Rodgers has just brought him on, <laughs> turned him into something different, like... The boys were all class now. I uh, think he could play in the no. Premier League anywhere. Which I personally think he should have won something. And on you go, horse, and um, I'm sorry. I was talking to you there. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. Um, so I were pretty happy with that. I think, I mean, going through the squad, 
Yeah. It's literally, I mean, everybody could have had their heart in the ring. I mean, uh, it's just showing how good a season for. Aye. So, another issue Celtic are currently undergoing. Patrick Roberts. Talk to me about Patrick Roberts. Well, what do you think's going to happen? If we could get the boy, like, obviously, he's brilliant. Plays play on Man City. Like, we get him, then I think that would be a big win for us because then, like, he's there every week and we don't need to just play him just because he's gone. We can just. Um, see, to me, week. I think Roberts is more of a game changer. He's a good mm -hmm. player to have, take him on, to have an impact but, in the game. I mean, as well, I agree with that, but I mean, forget Celtic's end of the deal. I mean, if you look at Manchester City, right, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's agreed that he's going back, but if you look at their team, well, you'd have, what, David Silva, Raheem Sterling, yes. Kevin De Bruyne, yeah, Sterling, all these players all get ahead of them. Um, and with Pep, going to look to improve the squad over the summer. Oh, undoubtedly, with the 98 million that he'll end up spending on the next <laughs> young talent. Uh, so I think been. we've got a great chance of getting him. I've probably seen something about do Roberts the is meant to be saying in a new... <laughs> Roberts is meant to be getting another year loan at Celtic. That's what uh, I would do if well, I was uh, contacted. Half a million. Mm -hmm. Rumours, rumours galore. Well, um, uh, I think personally, uh, I think Patrick Roberts would be willing to come back. I think I the boys it. got to know that he's he's not going to play every week. I mean, who knows? Well, do I could have some plan off his sleeve to to use Patrick Roberts, but I mean, would they maybe have recalled I mean, him in the summer? He had the chance to the way when he came in. Denial. When did they go what, back? Sorry? The way Jason Denier wanted to go back, like, there was no chance of him stay, staying. Aye, uh, he, he went to Galatasaray, he went to, wasn't it? Aye. Uh, uh, Galatasaray, then he went to Sunderland. Mm -hmm. well, obviously, Sunderland's went downhill. Uh, so he's playing every week for Sunderland. So I think if Roberts does decide, well, if Roberts does join us permanently, it would just show you how far Scottish football's come that he snub a team mm -hmm. like. Man City, don't be Celtic, in Scotland. And he must love the club, I mean, he's got a bit of a, he's got a bit of a friend, romance, whatever you uh, like to call it, with Kieran Tierney as well, so, all these little things Roberts. might just contribute to, uh, to Roberts wanting to stay. Mm. So. Like, if you think but about it, he stays here, he gets, he gets to play in one. Europe, Fuck. he gets to play in Europe, plays every week. Sorry, I was playing FIFA there on Partick Thistle, just scored in the 87th minute. Um, Shut up, get on with it. Um, he plays Europe, plays every week, and then if you go to Man City, you'll still get Europe, but you're sitting in the bench, maybe the reserves. You need to remember, but he's, what, 19? He's still got his whole future ahead of him, his whole career, mm -hmm. so obviously he's thinking about his career. Do you think Patrick Roberts will learn more? Not playing every week, but training at, at Man City and, and all the stuff well, like that brings me. Or fairly. playing every week at Celtic. I'll be playing play every week because in the Champions um, League, Champions League, Europa you're playing League, a Barcelona, titles, trophies. Wait, mm -hmm. if you're sitting in the bench every week for Man City, wait, who you got to get a game against? What like, maybe and. The FA Cup against Ipswich, maybe. Yeah. But we, we do see it all over the place with these so breakout talents. <laughs> I know. Uh, where are these young players that's becoming a bit of a feature of modern day football? That young players simply don't you know, give a fuck and just want to make sure that they're playing for a big club and might limit them to no action in the park. But as long as they're there, they're content with it. Could name a few, yes. But, um, do you think one, Patrick yeah. Roberts? I wouldn't go on ahead, I wouldn't name one. <laughs> <laughs> do you actually <laughs> think Patrick Roberts is one that wants to, to do something with his career, wants to play every week, wants to get better, or wants simply to be able to say that he plays for Man City? That's a tough question, that's a... 
a good question, mm, but I, I don't know what's up there. Uh, yeah, I will just <laughs> need to wait and see. Bye. I'm always asking hard questions. Eh, uh, anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> talk, about, talk, about, talk about Patrick Roberts. Um, another player. Way. Europe. I know. Ooh, so now we can really. maybe... Scottish Nationals. Yeah. Uh, another thing I'd like to talk team. about. <laughs> another Ooh. thing I think we, sh if we should talk about. Obviously, this season been a drastic success. I don't care ultimately what happens uh, for the rest of the season. Obviously, we want to win the Scottish Cup final, but no matter what happens, it's been a success this first season. I put it to you now: How does Brendan Rodgers keep improving. bringing success to yeah. Celtic Park? Well, I'd say next year we aim for that, getting through in the last sixteen or maybe third in the group to get to Europe. Mm -hmm. And maybe getting further right. on into like the last eight, the last four of the Europa League. As I touched on er earlier, I'd hundred percent more like what you call it, uh to go into the round of thirty two rather than the last sixteen. Right. Because like it's like to see we we get put out in the last sixteen. But we'd have a we well, would we'll have more chance of succeeding in the Europa League. Mm. But in the, in the Europa yeah. League, say in the league uh, groups of 32, do you say we get a Sevilla? Do we go through or are, we, are they out mm. straight away there? Just depends looking at the lineup. Aye. I mean, ultimately, no, in the Europa League, we could just. Sevilla will not be participating in the Europa League. <laughs> no, actually. Aye, but really. it's, it's the luckier draw with everything. I mean, we could easily end up playing teams like what Man, Man U had in the group, like Zoira uh, and all these teams. I mean, yeah. nobody's in the Europa League, so as again, it's just a lucky, lucky the draw. Mm. So I think next season, personally, I think Brendan Rodgers is, uh, he's got to try and, you know, see next season I'd be content if Rodgers does the same in Europe. Uh, to be honest, I don't think Europe is his major. I mean, he said he wants to be make us a force in Europe again this season. I think he certainly made us competitive in uh, Europe, and I think that's all. That's a realistic aim. He's, he's got to win the league next season. I think he will, and then uh, yeah, I'd like to see him win uh, as much silverware with the cups as, as he can. But another issue: transfer targets have been rumoured. Obviously, a lot of circulation well, about Patrick Roberts just now. Uh, well Dominic Solanke as well. I don't think like we don't need them. I know. I know the like we need to get stronger. Need more experience in our team. Like, need a few more experience for the youngster. Like, well, we need who doesn't really play as much. Like that's no experience. That's only I experience. Ah, but he's young and Liverpool and teams. But they're more looking for him. Mm -hmm. Well, well Patrick, I mean, ideas. every player, every player is young, and Solanke is not going to ever become a good player if he doesn't go to a team as Same. an inexperienced player and yeah. becomes an experienced player. I mean, Patrick Roberts didn't play for Man City. They came to us and look what he's became here. We're, we're desperate to keep him. So I think Solanke would be a great signing. Don't know too much about him, uh, but just like every Chelsea youngster, he was he's been out on loan and. Yeah. In these places, but I think that's the kind of main rumour going about just now that we're, we're interested in them. Not oh, bad then, I. <laughs> um, so I, I think, I think we've covered a substantial amount, amount uh, for episode one of the podcast. Well, I think so we're about to just run out of time anyway on the recording, so we're going to actually have to end it here. So I've got to thank you guys for actually coming on to the podcast and calling us for actually presenting us so well, bye thoroughly enjoyed right. it so i hope you hope guys enjoyed more this in the future. one aye do you so, need your comments in there uh, <laughs> aye, aye, aye. any topics we'll cut it short, <laughs> we'll cut it short <laughs> here um, aye. so i hope you guys enjoyed this one and i'll see you guys later